Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, turn to 2 Thessalonians 3, 14 and 15. Okay? Memory verse by the, by the pond. Okay? When you get there, uh, remember these verses, it's not just something to have up here. Make sure we're memorizing them up here and making sure that they're down here because we're applying it to the life we live. And this verse is important. This is one I've got to get memorized. Okay? I don't have it memorized yet. She's got to get comfortable. So 2 Thessalonians 3.14 And if any man obey not our word in this epistle, notice it says any man. Remember we're not supposed to be a respecter of persons. If any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Okay? The whole point, brother and sister of Christ, when we when I've done some teachings of uh, sin justification to break fellowship, I did a teaching from the Bible. The Lord showed me something amazing to share with you guys. And the thing is, is yes, sin is justification to break fellowship. If someone starts to turn their back, I mean, they, they got saved through the true plan of salvation. They believe in the major doctrines. The King James Bible is God's perfect written word. And you see them start to waver in any of those. And they start promoting, they, they used to stand for certain doctrines, but now they're kind of leaning towards another doctrine. You go and you correct them as a brother in Christ with love, with charity, with grace. And if they still tend to want to hold on to it, hold on to that sin or hold on to that false teaching, then there's justification to break fellowship. Okay, I've taught this time and time again, but one thing that I've never really made a big point about is this, though. What's the next verse read in verse 15? Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Count him not as an enemy. Uh, brothers, sisters in Christ, there's times where you can, when you ask somebody their testimony, and their testimony is just going from unbelief to belief, no changed life, then you realize you start asking more questions, and you start realizing, well, the plan of salvation doesn't line up, that they got saved off of doesn't line up with the Bible. And then this doesn't line up, and then that doesn't line up, and then you go, well, it's better just to treat them like they're lost because err on the side of caution, preach the true plan of salvation. Okay. But you're going to have some people in your life, brothers and sisters of Christ, that you're going to believe is saved. And there's going to be times where you're going to have, like uh, Paul did, great contention with the brother in Christ that they went their separate ways. Now, Paul doesn't go on writing letters, talk, bad-mouthing that person, talking bad about that person, and treating that person as an enemy. He's admonishing them as a brother. And that's what I see a lot of the brethren failing in this. Okay, I see brethren that I believe is 100% saved. I believe it. And if I'm wrong, we'll stand at the uh, um, judgment seat of Christ and find out that I'm wrong. Uh, the catching way of the body of Christ, or if my soul gets caught up, because when you die, your soul gets caught up, uh, I'll find out. Uh, we all will find out who's truly saved and who's not. But the point is, is we're supposed to ad admonish him as a brother. And there's brethren out there that are, um, they're name calling, they're spreading lies, they're they're backbiting. Um, I mean, it's something that I would expect from the lost world. It really is. Uh, like fake, false converts, fake Christians. But there's some brethren out there that you have to just break fellowship with for the reasons of the Bible. I almost wanted to say any reason, but that's not any reason. Okay? You better make sure it's because of what the Bible says. Sin. They're promoting sin. They don't want to repent. Then you break fellowship with them. All right? But when you break fellowship, the whole point of this memory verse to memorize, if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man have no company with him that he may be ashamed. He's put out of the fellowship so he can be ashamed to motivate him to repent so he can be brought back into the fellowship. That's the whole point of putting someone out of the fellowship is so that God can deal with them and get them to repent through chastening of the Lord. Okay. If it gets to that point, when you put them out, God, those that are without, God judges. We judge those that are within. So when you put them out, you're putting them out because it's gotten to that point where they're so stubborn, they want that sin, or they're just not going to get back on the right path. 
that you're putting them out of the fellowship so God will judge them and get them right with him so they can get back into the fellowship. That's the whole point. You don't put them out of your fellowship so you can kick them to the curb and just start spitting on them and treating them like you know dirt. You don't reward evil with evil. You don't turn around and treat them like they're just wicked and start telling everybody they're lost, they're a Jesuit, and we're all this junk. Okay? Some of you know who you are out there that's been calling me a Jesuit behind my back. Um, you don't do that. If you have a disagreement and you have to go your separate ways, you admonish them as a brother. Okay? Remember, that's still a brother in Christ. There's a lot of times in this world, brother, sister, Christ, that we point out a lot of false converts, a lot of false teachings, the attitude someone has towards sin. Do they hate sin? What God says is sin. And we talk about how there's a lot of false converts, but brothers and sisters of Christ, there's going to be saved brethren in your life that you're going to be breaking fellowship with because they're off somewhere and they don't want to repent. They're in sin somewhere and they don't want to repent. Now, it said break fellowship. I didn't say you turn on them and just become and start rewarding evil with evil and start acting like the lost world, name calling, and trying to do everything you can, especially if that man is in ministry. You don't turn around and just start promoting lies and hypocrisy and uh, false uh, witness, doing everything you can to turn brethren against that man in ministry because he's off somewhere. Okay? You admonish him as a brother. Then you give him to God. You put him without and you let God deal with him. That's how God designed it. So I'm pleading with the brethren to memorize those scriptures. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy. Who's the enemy? The lost world. You don't count him as an enemy. You don't treat him as an enemy. But you admonish him as a brother. I'll, I'll reiterate this. Another way to say this is, you put him out so God can chasten him, but you put him out with a door. There's a door there for him to come back. There's a way for him to come back. You don't put him out and treat him like the enemy, like you just seal off the door and you know brick it up and everything so it can never be used again. There's no way for him to come back. That's why this is saying, no, you don't treat him like an enemy. There's supposed to be a door there for him to be able to come back. He repents. He forsakes. He gets his heart right with the Lord. He gets back to serving the Lord. You're supposed to be able to invite him back in your fellowship. Admonish him as a brother. Memorize this scripture, brothers and sisters in Christ. And please, please apply it to your heart and apply it to your life. I'm going to fail you sometimes. and I don't want to. I'm going to try not to. And my goal is not to. I've been corrected by some of the brethren on some of the ways I've said things. Um, I've been corrected by brethren when I slip up and say things wrong. Um, but if I make a mistake, brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm going to do my best to repent and forsake. But bottom line, if you have to break fellowship with me in the future, I, I said, I'm always, I'm always examining myself and I see the faults. We can watch the faults that other brethren make and we can learn from the faults of other brethren and do our best not to make those same mistakes. But I'm still a man. I'm still under the law of sin. The word death is dropped. If you've ever followed this ministry, the law of sin and death is what the lost world's under. We are under the law of sin. We're also under the law of God for those who are saved. But I'm still under the law of sin. I still have to deal with this wicked flesh. I still make mistakes. Okay? Be careful to not do what the lost world does, just turning on each other and fighting with each other. I've seen it happen where these people are they're brothers in Christ and they're just you know like family and they're just so close and ministry working together and then you just see them turn on each other and they just start going at it with each other and just treating each other rewarding evil with evil and you're just going crazy that's what the lost world does but as Bible believing God fearing men and women we're not supposed to be like that if it's a brother in Christ it's a brother in Christ if you've called a brother in Christ lost he's lost he's a Jesuit he's this he's that because he's off somewhere, whether it's sin, or he's off in one of his teachings a little bit, you need to go apologize to that brother. You know what the Bible talks about, that offering? I know this is just a short video, but that offering, when they were going to give an offering, Jesus was tell, talking about it, he says, you need to stop and don't even give that offering to God. You need to go make it right with your brother, and then come back and give your offering to the Lord. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but 
You need to go make it right with your brother first. Even if he's a brother you put out of your fellowship, if you're if you're talking bad about him behind his back and you're saying he's lost and he's dead all because he's wrong somewhere or he's in sin somewhere, you don't reward evil with evil. You need to make it right. You need to apologize. Okay? So memorize this scripture, put it in your heart, and remember that there are some brethren that you're going to believe with all your heart, you love them, and you're going to believe that they're saved, but you're going to have to put them out of your fellowship. And when you do put them out of your fellowship, you're not to treat them like the lost world, an enemy. Okay? He's put out in the lost world as far as fellowship. You're not to fellowship with them anymore like you don't fellowship with the lost world. But the whole point is, is you put them out of your fellowship so God chastens them and there's a door there for you to get your fellowship back with them. For them to repent, forsake, and you get your fellowship back. You don't have that with the lost world. The lost world's not allowed in your fellowship, period, unless they get saved. They come to the Lord broken and get saved. But with a brother in Christ, there's always supposed to be an open door for them to come back under the right conditions. Okay? That's supposed to be there. That door lately, it seems a lot of the brethren, they just slam that door. They, Like I said, they brick it up, they cement it, put, seal it with the metal, whatever, so the brother can never come back. And they just break fellowship and they just cast the brother to the side like he's nothing, he's an enemy, he's like the lost world. And that's not how we're supposed to be treating the brethren. Okay? You admonish him as a brother. And I can say it again and again. But this, God put it on my heart recently that please, please, please memorize this scripture, put it on your heart with the life that you're living, and make sure that you are not going behind brethren's back and saying, no, they're lost, they're a heretic, and this and that, and that, because they're in sin somewhere. And oftentimes when a man in ministry is in sin somewhere, any teaching that starts to convict him of that sin, he's going to be off in that teaching. That's just the way it is. I'm not saying it's just, I'm not saying it's right, he's wrong, 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 I would be wrong, wrong, wrong. But it's because of that sin. Correct him as a brother. Put him without. Admonish him as a brother. But leave that door open for fellowship to come back under the right conditions. Repentance, forsaking, and getting his heart right with the Lord. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.